If you're struggling to properly set up your recording session live streams, this is your video. We're only going to be using free plugins to set up the stream. And if you want to use zero latency auto-tune while you're live, I'm also going to cover that. I'll be using Cubase for this tutorial, but if you're in a different thought, you'll also be able to follow along. In step one, we're going to do the routing from and to the Apollo interface. Our end goal is to use the Apollo to make a virtual mix of all Cubase audio, all live audio, and to then feed that into OBS. So open the UAD console app, and in here we're going to route all of our audio to the first two inputs of the Apollo because OBS is only going to listen to those. Go to Preferences, I.O. Matrix. Depending on the kind of Apollo you have, this can look a little different. But in any case, you want to get this monitor left and monitor right to positions 1 and 2. So click on the input, set the first one to monitor left, and the second one to monitor right. And while I'm here, I'm going to have my two mic and line inputs on 3 and 4. Next, we're going to create a stereo virtual channel to receive the output from Cubase. To do that, we're going to link virtual channels 1 and 2. So click virtual channel 1, and then click this link button, and you can rename it to Cubase. Then go back to Cubase, Studio, Studio Setup. Here you choose the Apollo. And if you go into the settings, you'll see those inputs and outputs. Next, go to audio connections, outputs. If there's anything there, you can just delete those buses. Just right click and remove. Add a new one, stereo, and choose virtual one and virtual two. And for the input, we're gonna choose our mic input, which for me is the second one on my Apollo. So Cubase is all set. Now we're gonna go back to UAD console to set up the mic channel. I'm gonna set mine to line in because my mic is going through an external preamp and compressor before it's going to my Apollo. If your mic's going straight into your Apollo, then choose mic in. Rename it. And this one's gonna be for my guitar. And now you can add your zero latency plugins that are running on your Apollo hardware. I add Auto-Tune, which is a UA real-time version of the plugin, so not the one you use in Cubase. Compression, Reverb, and Delay. You would of course go in there and change the settings, but I'm just going to skip that for now. And make sure over here that you're only monitoring the effects and not recording them. This way you just get a clean vocal in Cubase, but the viewers in your live stream, they are hearing these effects. In step two, we're gonna route the computer audio to OBS as well. In my live streams, I use Splice for loops. So if I want my viewers to hear that audio, I'm gonna to have to route it into the Apollo virtual mix to then go into OBS. You can do that by creating another stereo virtual channel in UAD console, but I just do it with a quick computer setting. I'm on a Mac, so in my settings, and these are in Dutch, but you go to your sound settings and under output, instead of the built-in output, you choose the Apollo. Now I don't need this splice audio, so that's muted, because it's all coming through the Apollo. For step three, we're finally gonna go into OBS. If you don't have it yet, go to the link below and download the latest version for your operating system. When you first open OBS, it'll be empty. I'll be honest, I didn't wanna start over with the default settings just to do this video, but I am going to show you in detail the steps that you need to follow. Here you can set up different scenes, in a scene, you set up your screen and audio for the purpose of that scene. I have one for when I record a beat making video. One is a waiting screen that runs at the start of a live stream. This one also plays my music. I very much recommend this because when you start a stream, especially a multi-stream, you're gonna check if everything's okay on the different platforms before you actually start the stream. And the waiting screen also gives people a chance to join and say hi in the chat. Here I have a be right back scene in case I need to powder my nose during the live. And a similar one if I just want to talk. And then the actual live stream scene. Let's jump into that one. This is what my live stream looks like. I photoshop the background. Here you see my Cubase screen. Here's my camera. And then I have a multi-chat, which displays a chat from both YouTube and Twitch. That makes it easier for me to follow the chat. It's also more fun for the viewers. And I also post recaps of my streams. So then you also have the chat in there because it's recorded on the screen. So how did I build this scene? How it works is you click this plus and then you add everything you need. This is the multi-chat and these are the alerts. 
So when people subscribe or donate, this also has its own sound. We're gonna get back to those, but just know that they're there. My overlay, that's the Photoshop background. So the blue and the text here and on top. To add an image like that or any other image, you go to the plus sign and choose image. Then you get to name it and when you click OK, you choose an image. And if you ever want to replace it, just click it, then go to properties and browse for a new one. This red outline will appear for every element that's in your scene and it allows you to resize, you can move it around, and if you hold Option or Alt, you can trim it. Then my camera. I have a Canon R50. This camera has a setting for live streaming, which is pretty nice, so I just plug it in. If you want to add a camera, you go to Video Capture Device, and I'll go to my Properties. You'll get to see this. So you can choose from a list of video capture devices that are available on your computer. Next, I have my Apollo. That's Audio Input Capture. And then on the bottom, I have Splice and Cubase. That's, in my case, a Mac OS screen capture. It's going to be a screen capture on a Windows computer as well. In this case, you're going to get the option to record your entire screen, just one window, or an application. I chose application, so when I'm live and I open up any other application or a browser, that's not going to show. For Splice, I deselected Show Cursor because it was showing a double cursor. Not the biggest issue, but just so you know. A little bonus tip, something a lot of people run into. If you want to display your real-time sub counter in YouTube Studio, you add a browser. And then paste the URL in here. And you might get a login screen, even though you're already logged into YouTube Studio. What you do is, in OBS, right-click on the YouTube screen, choose Interact, and then log in. I'm just going to delete this one. All right, let's dive into my OBS settings. The general tab. I'm not going to go through all available options because some of them are personal preferences, like these, for example. But I will show you my settings for everything. Most settings I didn't even touch, but if you'd like to, you could copy this. Appearance, nothing important. Stream, however, is important. Here you set up your main streaming platform. For me, that's YouTube, so I chose this one. This server. And here you log into your account. This could be YouTube or Twitch or anything else. This one I have selected. Ignore recommendations. Output, I've tried several settings here. What works for you here depends on your device and also your internet connection. If you want to know, I'm on a MacBook Air with pretty standard Wi-Fi connection. It's not like I have the best upload speeds or anything at all. Set this to advanced and then you can copy these but I would advise you to try different settings as well, especially if you're not happy with the results. The bitrate is a very important one. I started out with a higher one, but then I noticed that on Twitch, the screen was going black and a lower bitrate solved that. This does mean that my stream is gonna be in a lower quality, but it's still okay. There's also settings for recording that I'll just show you. For audio as well. Replay buffer, I don't think I touched any of this. Then audio, sample rate at 48, stereo, these are all disabled. And then this again, I didn't touch. Video, again, pretty standard. And then these are personal preferences, I didn't change them. Advanced, default settings. Click OK, and those are all set. Next, we're going to set up the multi-stream. For this, you're just going to have to follow along. So go ahead and click the multi-stream link in the description. You'll end up here. Click Go to download. Scroll down to these blue links and choose the one for your system. Then open the download and follow the instructions to install the program. It's just clicking Next, Next, Next. You know how those go. If you're on a Mac and maybe also on a Windows computer, I'm not sure. 
but you might get a warning for the unknown source of the download. So just go into your privacy and security settings and you'll see a notification about the download. You can click that and just tell your computer it's all good. Then go into OBS and go to Docs. You should see this one, Multiple Output. It'll be a separate window, but if you move it around, you can dock it somewhere. I put mine here. And here you can add a new target, which is a new platform. I'll show you how I added Twitch. Modify. So first, rename it. And then in the Service tab, you're gonna add the stream URL and the stream key. By the way, never share your stream key. To get the URL, go to the link in the description. You'll get this page, but based on where you live, and then you can just copy the first link or another one, see what works for you. So paste that one in here. And for the stream key, go to Twitch, Creator Dashboard, Settings, Stream, and your key is right here. So copy it and back in OBS, that's gonna go here. The rest of the settings are default settings in my case. If you don't have YouTube as your primary platform and you're adding it here, then go to YouTube and click go live. And then the URL and the stream key are here. So now you've connected multiple platforms and you wanna see the combined chat from YouTube and Twitch on your screen. For this multi-chat, I'm using Botrix. You can find the link below. If you're on a Windows computer, I've come across way more possibilities for the multi-chat. I'm on a Mac, so I ended up with this one. It's very easy to set up, has lots of options and it's free. Here again, sign in with your primary platform. For me, that's YouTube. And then on the profile page, you're gonna see these other platforms that you can connect. I've already connected my Twitch, which is why I can see the settings button here. What you're gonna see is a sign in button like these. So go ahead and sign in to the ones that you wanna connect. When you've done that, go to widgets, chat. Here you can change the look of your chat. You get a preview here. And once you like it, Copy the widget URL, in OBS add a browser, and name it something like multi-chat, paste that link, click OK, and you're set. So my chat is going to appear here, you can drag it anywhere you like. You can also customize the chat bot itself, for moderation, for extras, totally up to you. And then the last thing that I also have is my alerts, if someone subscribes or donates and stuff like that, they also show up separately in the middle of my screen right here, and they have their own image, which are GIFs, and their own sound, so I can't miss them. Welcome to the wild side. If you want those, go back to Botrix. Here, you're gonna go through the settings of every separate alert. They also remind you which platform you're changing it for. If you wanna switch, go back to profile and click settings on the right platform. So you see it's switched to Twitch now, then go back to alerts. You can completely customize the look, you can upload your own image and sound, change the font, remember to save your settings. And on top, if you have OBS open, you can click these ones to preview the alert. And on the very top, you have the widget URL. Just copy it, add another browser in OBS and paste it. Also select control audio via OBS and then you get this one here. In OBS under docs, you should see these now so you can monitor those in OBS as well. The final step is to actually go live. YouTube is my main platform, but before I go live on YouTube, I actually go into my stream manager in Twitch and I change the stream title so it uses that one when I go live. Then I go to the live section in YouTube. I always check my settings. I actually don't fill out too much of this. I just make sure that only subscribers can be in the chat. And I check if the stream goes out to everyone or just to my channel members. Next, go back into OBS, manage broadcast, select existing broadcast, and choose the one that you just prepped in YouTube, and then click select broadcast and start streaming, and then you're gonna go live. When you're live on YouTube, click start on Twitch, and then you're live on Twitch as well. So I hope that helped. If it did, please like the video and also subscribe and have fun live streaming.